Warning, this video is going to be me talking about season 4 thus far in a critical manner. If you like your MLP vids to be nothing but sunshine and rainbows, I suggest turning back now. Part of me feels like it might be a bit premature to start talking about this kind of stuff, but after discussing it a bit with Digibrony after Bats aired, I'm more certain now that some of the points I've been considering might be legitimate as opposed to me merely being cynical. Season 4 of MLP so far feels a bit... different. And not in the way I was hoping it was going to be. There are a couple things I've been noticing that are kind of worrisome. I'm not here to spout doom and gloom or say that I hate this season. Far from it. I just can't help but have this sneaking suspicion that some of the issues I've been detecting in these first seven episodes might be sticking around for the rest of the season. I hope to god that I'm wrong, but I've gotten a lot of messages from people asking similar questions to the one I've been asking myself for the last couple of weeks, so I figured a statement addressing them all was kind of warranted. Anyone remember my old as hell, terribly made, and embarrassingly highly viewed Magical Mystery Cure video? God, I hope not. Anyways, I mentioned in that video that while I was skeptical of Twilicorn up until that episode, I thought M.A. Larson pulled it off as best as he could given only 22 minutes to make it all happen. The fact that he was able to retroactively give nearly every episode of MLP thus far a narrative purpose by having the lessons Twilight learned be key to her ascension was also brilliant. I was skeptical of M.A. Larson, but I should have believed. However, I went on to say that despite the transformation working in the context of Magical Mystery Cure, whether the change would stay in My Good Graces was entirely dependent upon the content of Season 4, and so far, Alicorn Twilight is criminally underutilized. I was really trying to look past this in the episodes we've been getting post-Princess Twilight Sparkle, but having Twilight get on the bandwagon during Bats was just cringeworthy. Remember, Twilight doing this is basically akin to Cadence, Celestia, or Luna doing it as well. And would any of us had signed off on Celestia rallying behind Applejack without even attempting to find another solution? Daring Don't was another odd situation for Twy. You would think that she could have just walked in and by royal decree tell every pony to just sit down and be quiet, or at least have the ability to incapacitate three Earth ponies. I know that her lack of intervention was to serve the narrative of that episode, but if your narrative is served in isolation by convoluting your overarching lore, then something is wrong. Princess Twilight just hasn't been given anything princessy to do since the premiere, and if the adventure arcs are the only time we're going to even attempt to address her wings, then it's really hard to defend the change as anything other than toy bait, which was my biggest fear upon the end of Season 3. With all the revisits we've gotten so far to the Everfree Castle, though, I'm actually rather hopeful that the restoration project will have something to do with Twilight's new position, especially considering Equestria Girls had her make that crack about getting her own castle. Perhaps there was some foreshadowing there? Only time will tell, but I'm not giving up just yet. Of course, despite people lamenting Twy acting the same after getting her wings, I'd argue her dynamic in the show is still slightly different, and I think that is my main problem. Twilight is an alicorn. No, I'm not bringing up that can of worms again, just hear me out for a second. Remember, post-Magical Mystery Cure, I was all for Twilicorn as she was framed in that episode. I think, though, that her ascension had a side effect on the narrative that I hadn't considered that might be the source of my underlying contentions with the season thus far. Because Twilight has ascended, she's no longer learning about friendship. Friendship lessons were the backbone of the entire show for the last three seasons. The characterizations that came from examining interpersonal relationships and the cast interacting and dealing with real ethical dilemmas is what made the characters that inhabit this world feel real. Now that Twilight has mastered friendship, a lot of the episodes this season aren't focusing on driving home character-centered conflicts that stem from our main cast, and as a result, the overall character building and exploration in Season 4 thus far has been lacking. Twilight is the friendship master, so let's have her go investigate a spooky castle instead, or turn them into superheroes, or have a bat pony flying around. Are these concepts fun? Well, yeah, sure. But for me personally, and for a lot of other people too, we were attracted to this show for the strong characterization that came from the slice of life concepts and the real moral issues they explored. Season 4 so far hasn't really done any of that save for Flight to the Finish, an episode Twilight wasn't in, because it's too busy setting up these outlandish framing devices for its stories, taking time away from being able to intertwine any meaningful character interaction into the narrative, and hurting the overall moral of the story that these episodes are half-heartedly attempting to pitch. This also leads into a related point, I think what a Friendship is Magic's greatest strengths was the conviction it was able to deliver with these slice-of-life stories, a fact that stemmed from leveraging its limitations, to a point where it became a better product than what it would have been without these limitations in place. 
Remember, My Little Pony is a show for all ages, and despite that being something that we in the community throw around in defense of our passion for the show, I think too often we tend to forget that all ages means it's for the little girls too. And in that respect, we can't expect anything like crazy in-depth existential backstories for Celestia and Luna, complex multi-layered world building, or graphic fantasy horse violence. If for no other reason than Hasbro won't allow one of their main IPs to deviate so far from what is culturally expected from a show of this primary demographic. Initially, Lorne wanted to have the Nightmare Moon arc be a season-long conflict, and have MLP in general be a lot more adventure-heavy, but Hasbro wouldn't allow it, hence the far more slice-of-life nature with a fantasy backdrop that we ended up getting. But the very result of that limitation is what went on to make the show so utterly fantastic. No offense to Lauren's original intentions, as all the other shows she's worked on that did get the green light for that kind of direction were also good, but MLP became something largely unique in Western children's animation as a result of its limitations, an examination of ethics with legitimate conviction, viewed through a social lens born out of fantasy. Because it couldn't be an adventure show, the characters became the lifeblood of its narrative, and you tuned in not to witness crazy spectacle, but to see how this dynamic cast of characters would overcome very real problems, and how their world, grounded in a completely different social structure, allowed for the morals it presented to resonate that much more strongly, as its world wasn't tied down by the preconceived baggage we have concerning our own reality. Suited for Success is my favorite episode of the show, but let's be honest, its premise sounds really boring. Rarity makes dresses, and then Rarity makes dresses again. You can't get more mundane than that as a premise. However, because this concept in no way attempts to move beyond what would be considered acceptable for the target demographic of My Little Pony, DHX is able to explore this concept to the fullest, and we get an amazing look into Rarity's character, how she thinks, what her motivations are, and how her passion is perceived both by herself and her friends, not to mention some awesome meta commentary thrown in from the writers, this is all really powerful, interesting character conflicts, and they can be turned up to 11 without anyone at Hasbro crying foul over the show going too far off the rails. Same thing for an episode like Green Isn't Your Color or Sleepless in Ponyville. Character studies are the show's bread and butter, and DHX can write amazing character interactions. Conversely, something like Power Ponies or the Nightmare Moon arc can only be taken so far. MLP isn't an action show, so they can't explore these concepts as dynamically as they really deserve. They need to subtly attempt to skirt the line just enough to keep standards and practices off their backs, so we only get a base impression of these kinds of conflicts in My Little Pony. And as a result, the narrative in these episodes suffers from feeling rather hollow and tropey, falling back on pop culture references and spectacle to keep the viewer invested. Pop culture references are nothing new to the series, but in season 4 they're a lot more prevalent and in your face. You actually had to go out of your way to notice things like the Big Lebowski reference and the cutie pox. With bats, you'd have to go out of your way not to notice the Batman nods. Once again, there's nothing really wrong with more prevalent pop culture references, but it's just weird to see that in a world like Equestria, where seasons 1 and 2 took so much time to try and separate itself from our reality, having entire episodes revolve around concepts like Winter Wrap-Up Day and the Running of the Leaves, and showing us locations like Cloudsdale that are wholly unique to MLP's world building and don't have any real world counterpart. To take a world that prided itself on its separation from ours and suddenly start shoving constant callbacks to things that only exist in our reality and not theirs begins to weaken that separation that took two seasons to build. I don't know. I could go on, but I think to really get too into this when only 25% of the season has been released would be unfair to DHX. If I have to revisit these points later, fine, but this is just venting on my part, really. A lot of what I like about this show kinda seems to be taking a back burner to new elements this season thus far. New elements that really aren't doing much to keep my attention. We'll just have to see where this season goes from here.